I was asked to get involved in something that was going to make a lot of money for me. And I almost did. But it turned out to be a money laundering scam and a tax evasion scam. I got to tell you about this. A woman contacted me recently and asked me to give an opinion as to the value of her dog attack case. She told me that she had hired a lawyer and the lawyer got her a settlement offer. She was being asked to take it and she didn't know whether or not she should take it because she felt it was too low. I said to her, okay, but you've got to understand a few things. You're going to have to pay me for this because it's going to take time away from my other things. And there are going to be some limitations. Number one, I am going to give you my opinion and you're not going to be able to use my opinion as evidence. I'm not going to negotiate for you because I'm not going to take over this case from the lawyer. That wouldn't be ethical. And I'm not going to have anything to do with collecting your money once the settlement is signed. That's how a bona fide second opinion is requested and is given in a legitimate personal injury case. It's limited to evaluating the case and giving the opinion. There's no taking over the case from the other lawyer and there's no collecting the money. These important points and limitations I put into a special written attorney engagement agreement for a second opinion. She said, okay, she paid the fee. And then I reviewed her case in detail, including her injuries, the photographs, the medical records. I looked at the bills and the law enforcement reports. I ended up confirming two things that uh, she had already suspected. First, her case was worth double what she was being offered. And second, Yes, she should have hired me from the beginning. Contrast this with a scam that's going on right now all over the country. I and other lawyers who represent injury victims have received email messages that say this. I was bit by a dog. I was badly injured. In fact, I had to have plastic surgery and it cost me $50,000 out of my own pocket. I have negotiated a settlement myself. I have to get this money right away. The settlement agreement, which has been written and signed by everybody, says that I have to have a lawyer. I would like to know if you can do this for me. All you're going to have to do is collect the money and disperse it to me. And you can take a cut of the money. Just tell me how much. Now, when I got this, I said to myself, it's too good to be true. Something that is too good to be true is not true. So I said to myself, I'm going to get to the bottom of this because, I mean, if this guy really needs my help, okay, fine, but this doesn't sound right to me. So here's what I'll do. This is what I, this is what I told him. I got back to him and I said, I'll do this. Sure. But first I want to see a few things. I want to see your, a copy of your driver's license, the police report or animal control report, the medical bills. I want to see some photographs of your injuries. And of course, I want to see the settlement agreement itself. Right, he responded and he said, well, here's the settlement agreement. But as you can see, I don't need a lawsuit. You really don't have to do anything other than just collect the money for me and take whatever fee you want to charge and then send the rest to me. That's it. That's all you have to do. All right. I got back to him and I said, no, I need to see the accident photos, the drug, all the other things that I, that I said a second ago. He went back and forth with me, getting stronger and stronger to convince me that I didn't need to see any of those things. And when I insisted on them, he disappeared. All right. So now what is, what is this about? This is a money laundering scheme and a tax evasion scheme. Let me tell you, how it works. When there's an accident and there's a settlement, the victim's attorney, which was supposed to be me in this, in this deal, receives the check from the other party and puts the check in a client's trust account. When the money is collected by the bank, the lawyer then writes out a check to the client and of course, the lawyer takes the fee that he's supposed to get. When the lawyer sends the money to the client, there is no 
W4, there's no W9, there's no forms sent to the IRS. The bank does these transactions as a matter of course because, you know, we're doing these cases all the time, year after year, decade after decade. This is a normal procedure in a, in a personal injury case. So the bank doesn't think anything of it. They don't report it. The client trust account is not audited. It Money is going from one account through the lawyer's account to somebody else's account. And there is no trace of it. No trace of it other than in the lawyer's own records. In addition, personal injury settlements are not taxed because personal injury money is not taxable. It's not income. It's money that the victim gets to make the victim whole. And because of that, it's not income. It does not get taxed and it should not be taxed. So what we have here is, from the standpoint of criminals, a perfect money laundering and tax evasion scheme. Here's my advice to my colleagues. Do not get involved in any injury case that you can't verify yourself. Do not get involved in the settlement of a case where the client has settled it and there's big money. And all you have to do is collect the money, take a fee, and pass the remainder along to this client. Don't do that. Now, if you're asked to give a second opinion and you'd like to do something like that, I'll give you the agreement that I drafted for free. Just go to my website, which is dogbitelaw.com. At the bottom of the first page, I've put a little link. Go to that link. You can download the agreement from there.